The World Series of Poker is famous. Who doesn't want to go to Las Vegas? I remember when I was a child, uh, we have a big family. Uh, I would certainly not sit like this. Because when I went to school, I was wearing the shoes from my other brother that was wearing them already from my other brother. And they had no bottom. Because we had no money to, to buy shoes for so many children. My father was working and my mother was trying hard. Three brothers, five sisters, big family. Uh, there was not enough money to keep that. So you don't throw away anything. And in winter time, we didn't have extra blankets on the bed, but we put all the big coats on top of the one blanket we had. And it was heavy and it, it warmed. And then we were sleeping in one big room, as big as this room, I think, which I have for where now. We sleep with eight people, nine people. And it was in that time like this. So yes, we were poor and we probably learned to appreciate money better. And we should never take it for granted. So you have principles built in from your childhood. When we were born poor, you grow up and you have a big goal in your mind. And I worked on the marketplace to help. I came in the pub sometimes to drink a coffee and watch them playing card. And sometimes you picked up the story. And Las Vegas was something special. So when I had the chance, maybe 20 years later or something, to get to Vegas, I walked into a Hold'em game and I thought like, well, you get two cards, it must be simple. They were waiting for the ones that step on the table and want to have a good time and just play their hands for what it is. I was the fish. So when I lost like a couple of thousands to those very good players and I told myself I'll be back and get my money. And then when Arnold Schwarzenegger came with this movie, you know, he said I'll be back. It reminded me because that's what I said at that time because I was really upset about me being so silly and stupid to think that I can walk into a game I never played. I came back the next day and uh, we're waiting. <laughs> and I told them I'm going to open a list of seven cards that I love. And they want to play Oma Hilo. They say there is nobody. I say, well, when I sit on the table, I'm the fish. People will come. And they say, no, but there's nobody who plays this. I say, well, we will see. Just open a, uh, open a table, put me a name, and I sit on the table. Give me a dealer. That's the minimum you can do for your customer. So they say, OK, but if it doesn't work, then uh, we, I say, yeah, OK. So the Omaha players who were looking at my table when I was sitting and they announced seven cards stud, high, low, open, table, whatever, 328 or whatever. So they were looking and looking and then somebody else sits down and they see two fish in their eyes. So they join the high, low game, they join now because it's, in their eyes it's similar. They played for one and a half hour. The table was full within seven or eight minutes, although there was no list. I start to like this game. And they lost some money. I won some money, a few thousand, and I played a different game. So now they were in my pool, and then they looked at each other like, <laughs> we better stop. <laughs> and they stopped, and I carried on on that table, and I won my money back. I had a great experience and a big lesson I learned. Music is my first love. And certainly not the last. Hey, Frank, what's up? Where is everybody? They're in the car, Joe. They're playing. Always bring your nuts. There's a game. When you get moments of glory, uh, people don't know these moments of glory might be looking good, but they don't know on the backside that in the time that they think you don't have your results and they think you're going down, uh, there's nobody else unless they're very intimate 
Who knows what are you working on and what's the goal? The goal might be much bigger to achieve. I think it's a very big achievement and a goal to set to get the whole poker industry playing by one basic set of rules. Give a little bit, <laughs> give a little bit of your chips to me. Nowadays, they're all good because they have the computer. So they sit on the computer and they ask it. They get it in their face all the time. Now they have all the manager. And even PokerStars brought out something that helps you and educates you what is the best return of investment. I rather drink a nice cup of coffee with good friends than a bottle of champagne in a nightclub with people I don't even know. And uh, some say, yeah, sometimes it's nice once to take a Dom Perignon and an occasion. But do I look for it? No. Do I enjoy life? Yes. Uh, not always to the max, because you cannot have it all at the same time. And uh, family means a lot. Love and, and what's real from inside means a lot. So you have certain goals and you want to combine. So you are in this world now, which is going with up and down success and sometimes uh, frustration. And the way the card come, the way your life goes, you trying to pick the pieces that fit in your puzzle. The World Series of Poker is famous. Who doesn't want to go to Las Vegas? Tonight, one of poker's crown jewels, the Seven Card Stud World Championship. Seven Card Stud, shuffle up and deal now. Uh, I get close in 2003 and 4 in the World Series and the field's getting bigger and bigger, so it becomes a little bit of a crap shoot to get through the minefield of the first three, four days. Dan Harrington will call, and he will put Marcel Lusk on the edge of elimination. Marcel with a pair of fours, which is ahead, Harrington with a better draw. Marcel Lusk, if he loses this hand, we are down to our final table of nine. I'll just take an eight and a six, what the heck. That would give each player eights and sixes, and Harrington would have the better kicker. Turn card. It's a jack, and Harrington has a pair of jacks. And now Marcel Luce is going to need a miracle. He needs a four on the river, or he is out of the 2004 World Series. Uh, I think the results from now, if you get deep, are maybe even bigger. Yeah, comparing in that time. And it's a, there's a lot of frustration because there's pressure. People expect you to just win those bracelets here or there. And I'm still struggling to win one. And I didn't give up. I will never give up. I will take my chances, play the game. And somewhere along the road, same like online, I'll study it and I'll look what's going on and uh, change my game and my game plan to the circumstances. So in, in that time, it looked like my face was pushed on television, people know me, and I have gained from it. Respect, credibility, uh, I've not changed. I, I become more mature, more easygoing, and learned a lot on top of it. I still think I have a very good chance to win a World Series bracelet, but uh, so do many others. So we still have to compete, 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 and try to get that moment where you get in the position, you get lucky and the cards are coming, right?